This video was shot at the Gambler's General Store in Las Vegas. It's the world's largest gambling superstore, and they carry a complete selection of poker chips, books, gambling equipment, and much more. Be sure to stop by when you're in Las Vegas, or visit their website at gamblersgeneralstore.com. I'm here in Las Vegas at the Gambler's General Store, and today we're sitting with uh, Anthony Curtis, who is the publisher of the Las Vegas Advisor newsletter. And uh, I've known Anthony about 20 years. I think so. And uh, I, I know you're originally from your publication, Las Vegas Advisor, uh, but also you are, uh, have a publishing house, Huntington Press, right. where you publish a gambling book. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you got started in it? Sure. Um, well, Las Vegas Advisor is actually just one of our products. Uh, we're a full-service publishing house under the name Huntington Press which I got, everybody goes, what does Huntington Press have to do with Las Vegas or gambling at all? And what it has to do with it is that I was on the beach in uh, California, Huntington Beach, and I said, I gotta blow this pop stand and go to Vegas, and uh, that's what I did. I came to Vegas from Huntington Beach. So when I started the publishing house, I had to have a name, and I said, where did I get this idea? And I, hence Huntington Press. But Huntington Press is a full service publisher of, uh, of the, the newsletter and, and many books mostly on gambling in Las Vegas, but also on the mob, um, some things on, uh, you know, some fiction. Uh, we've probably got about 100 to 125 different products that we've published over the years. I, I never really knew your background, and I never asked your, your background about gambling, because you, you were interested in gambling. I, it's my understanding you were a professional gambler at one time. Can, can you yeah. give us a little background on, on sure. what you did and how successful you were at it? Well, that's, that's what I came here to do. Uh, you know, I came to Vegas to play. I, had, uh, I was going to college, and I was uh, reading books, more books on blackjack than I was reading on biology. And uh, I was a wrestler in, in high school and college, and I went to various colleges on wrestling scholarships, and I went originally to Duke and then to UCLA. And as you can see, I was getting closer and closer to Vegas. So when I turned 21, I didn't even finish college, and I came out to Vegas specifically to play. And I did. I played for about uh, maybe a decade and a half um, full-time professionally. And I played with the blackjack teams like you see on the movie 21 or the, the book Bringing Down the House. And uh, I knew all those guys from the movie, and we played with them and against them and uh, our team, and we were quite successful and, uh, and did very well. I got to the point where we did so well that we began to get too well-known. Um, and... It got to the point where I really couldn't play easily, and that's when I switch, you know, flipped the switch and went to publishing. All right, but now you still have an interest in, in gambling, I know. Well, well, it may not be blackjack because I think uh, just a couple of months ago you won a big uh, sports tournament. Yeah. And I think I read in the past you won some crap. Was it a crap tournament or a keno tournament? Or what uh, was it? I won just, uh, just about every kind of tournament there is because that's, that's what my group did. We did a lot of tournament play. And... Tournaments are different, you know, for instance, you can't beat a game of craps and you can't beat a game of Keno, you know, the odds are stacked against you, but you can beat a crap tournament or you can beat a, a Keno tournament. So I've won, I've played tournaments in all different, uh, in, in all different games and won in most of them at some point in my career. Um, yeah, recently I won a, uh, I didn't win, I took second. I was uh, second place in one of the big uh, football contests here at the Golden Nugget. I uh, lost in the finals. Uh, uh, got outplayed. <laughs> so, so you still keep uh, an interest in gambling? I play the things that I'm allowed to play. I mean, right. you know, because of when I did play and got known, I pretty much got 86 from being able to play table games. I haven't been kicked out of casinos. They let me go in. But I'm just not, uh, I'm not welcome at, the, at table games or blackjack specifically. So I do the things that they let me to do, which is quite a, they allow me to do, which is quite a bit of sports betting, um, some video poker, um, things like, things along those lines. Okay. And uh, when did you start the Las Vegas Advisor newsletter? Now, now, for anyone not familiar with it, it's a monthly newsletter that comes out and, and uh, people subscribe to it. They can do it online or they can get an actual physical right. copy of it. And uh, maybe you can explain how it started and, and what it does. Sure. Well, the, the whole idea behind the Las Vegas Advisor was when I got out here, which was in 1979. You know, this is 10 years before Las Vegas became the Las Vegas we know today, you know, which, which happened with the opening of the Mirage in 89. So in 1979 I got here and I didn't have much money. You know, I was just 21 years old and uh, I had to find a way to live, you know, cheaply. And uh, I discovered that I could leave, live very well and cheaply out here because of all of the values and the bargains and the deals. So way back in, in the early 80s I began thinking it would be really cool 
I wish I'd have known about these things before I came out. And I thought, what the heck, I'll start my own newsletter someday. And I began fiddling around with this newsletter, Las Vegas Advisor, I called it. And this was long before desktop publishing, you know, that didn't exist. And I had to do it on mimeographs and all. So I was still playing professionally. That's where I was making my money. But I was goofing around with this idea of the newsletter. And so it's actually been going on since, uh, since the mid-'80s uh, in, in one you know, way, shape, or form. Now, it's very well known, and, and you're an expert on Las Vegas. You've been quoted uh, in USA Today. I've seen you in tra Travel Channel specials, Discovery yeah, Channel specials. Learning Channel, Discovery Channel, yeah. So what we wanted to do now was get your best advice for uh, people who are traveling to Las Vegas. And if you got uh, maybe 10 tips you could give us for uh, sure. how do people – and your publication gets into how to get the most value for your money probably when one Yeah, well, there's, there's certainly, you know, when you gamble, there are different levels of gambling uh, expertise. And the starting level, you know, you, everybody starts off as a, as a beginner, or you call them, we call them squares, right? They don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And you can go all the way up to expert level. But where you begin to get good is when you learn what's called basic strategy. So these tips that we're going to talk about are going to be pretty much basic strategy. These are going to be things that most people can do very easily without too much effort and probably you know save money enhance their, their experience that sort of thing so okay. you want to ask me some questions and i'll give you some answers uh well let's go with uh is las vegas still a bargain or have the high prices everywhere taken the value out of it okay that's a good one that's a good start you know everybody thinks that las vegas has changed so much you know i wish i you know i hear this so many times i wish for the good old days i wish for the days of the mob you know i wish for the days when when there were no resort fees you know i wish for you know on hotel rooms i wish for these these glory days the reality is certainly prices have gone up because Las Vegas has changed its, its, its stance. It's not just all about gambling anymore. It's about celebrity chefs, and it's about staying in suites, and it's about going to nightclubs and buying $2,000 bottles of booze. Well, in my, in my book, a $2,000 bottle of, of anything isn't, um, isn't a bargain. It isn't a value. But what people don't realize or you know, they may not think about is that these are just a few places on the Strip. Um, places on the Strip, you know, the big joints, they're going to, to be expensive. And it's going to be like going on vacation in any other big city. But there are so many casinos in Las Vegas, maybe between 80 and 90 of them altogether. And these values still exist. These bargains are still out there. The, you know, the, the $1.50 shrimp cocktails and, and the $3 breakfasts and the, the $6 and $7 buffets, um, the, free, the free spectacles, the shows on the Strip or downtown at the Fremont Street Experience, these things still exist. So knowing where they are, you know, that's where things like the Las Vegas Advisor come in. Or, you know, even the American Casino Guide, your book. You tell people about where these things still exist in a town like Las Vegas. So the answer to that question is yes, absolutely. It's still, in my opinion, it's still Bargain City. It's still the best place, cheapest place in the world to have a good time. But, but, but reflecting on, on this, just uh, do you think it's just the young people that are buying these? Exp they're not gambling as much as they used to, is my understanding. Right. But it's the younger people that are going to the clubs and, and, and buying the bottles. It's mostly. Bottles of booze. Yeah, it's mostly. I mean, you know, uh, this is what uh, all of these, this clubbing and everything else, this is sort of aimed at, uh, at new money. This is aimed at the young kids. But that doesn't mean they're all young kids. You know, I've been to some of these. I've been to some of the clubs. And it's an interesting kind of mix. You know, it's not just all 20-some-year-olds. 20, 20 you've got 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s in there. You know, anybody who's got money who can pay that, you know, that, that tariff, is going to be in there, and they're going to take they're going to take it from whoever they can get it from. All right. Well, let's go on to uh, where are the best places to find value. Okay. So that's just sort of segues from what we were just talking about. Essentially, you usually want to go off the strip. Um, that's what's kind of weird when people go, "Wow, Vegas is expensive," because they they read a magazine or they see something on TV or they see a you know a TV show where something's been shot or even a movie. They just shot the one of the Born uh, series, the Born Identity 5 or whatever the heck it's going to be called with Matt Damon. Well, everything's being shot on the Strip, so that's what they're used to seeing, and that's what they come to, and that's what they book with their travel agent or through Expedia or whatever they do, you know, uh, when they're putting their trip together. The value is not necessarily on the Strip. The value is in places like downtown Las Vegas, um, places that we call the outliers. So they're known around town in Vegas as the locals, casinos. Uh, station casinos, uh, coast casinos, void casinos, uh, Arizona Charlies, this sort of thing, and the places out on Boulder Highway. If you can move out, you know, that's why I always tell people, try to be mobile when you come to Vegas. Even if you're staying on the Strip, you'd like to be mobile. You'd like to have a car, maybe rent a car or drive here, so you can get to the places 
downtown or around the strip, not necessarily on the strip. All right. Now, when I come, uh, years ago, I used to go to the strip properties, but since then, I, I've, I've learned a little more about it, and I, I concentrate my play, and usually an off-strip, uh, well, all, always an off-strip casino. So when I come, they'll comp my room for me, so, and, mm -hmm. and I'm not, uh, I don't have to pay those resort fees, which brings me to question number three. What's the deal with resort fees? And now I understand uh, MGM Resorts is going to introduce uh, paying for parking. This is right. something new to the Strip. Well, you know, what we've been talking about so far is, is the changing of certain areas in Vegas, and in mostly the Strip, a more upscale type of situation where they've built these huge casinos and they've spent lots of money bringing in these chefs and, you know, building these giant shows, Cirque du Soleil and whatever. Um, you know, the recession is not that far removed from where we are now. And when they spent all this money and leveraged themselves, they got into, they got into debt and they all have debt, uh, large debt load, and they're trying to make more money. And another thing that the recession did is it caused room rates to be depressed because people didn't want to come and spend money anymore. So one way that Vegas was able to lure them was with low, low room rates. They did that by working with groups that are called OTAs. That stands for Online Travel Agency. That's like an Expedia or a Travelocity or something like that. Most people, when they book their rooms in Vegas, now go through an organization, an entity like that, who take large percentages of the amount that people pay for rooms. So here's where the, they didn't want to raise room rates, but they wanted to make more money because they were losing too much to the OTAs. And here's where the resort fees came in. If they put a resort fee on top of a room charge, that does not have to be split with the OTAs. And it was like, holy mackerel, you know, a bonanza of money coming in. And effectively, a resort fee is a raising of a room price. But if they raise it in a different way so they don't have to split it, that's what resort fees are all about. What the customer needs to do, and the customer hates resort fees, you know, I mean, anybody who's ever paid a resort fee says, you know, you lousy whatever and so and so, you know, you said this room is $40 and it's $15 on top of that. So it's really 55 and that's a lousy way to do business. Well, it's, people don't like it, but you have to look at the entire price. If you're getting a $55 room, what would you pay for that room somewhere else? What would you pay for that room in LA or what would you pay for it in San Francisco or New York or, you know, who knows Detroit for that matter? When you look at it all in one package, it's still a pretty good value for a room. The room rates all together with resort fees are still pretty low, but people just don't like the way they're stacked. So the customer needs to put those things together, look at the rate all in one and say, is that a good rate or not? And not think of it and get angry by the fact that they've taxed something on. In terms of parking, um, yeah, just uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, MGM Resort International, which has places like the Mirage and MGM Grand and so forth, said they're going to start charging for parking everywhere. And that includes people that come there to gamble, people that come there to eat, people that come to see a show, even people that are staying overnight. They're going to charge them somewhere in the area of 10 bucks a night. So all of a sudden, you've got a room rate, a resort fee, and 10 bucks, you know, for parking. So you've got to put all that together. It's, you know, will people stand for, for uh, paid parking around here? I don't know. It's always been free in Vegas, so it'll be interesting to see. But uh, resort fees are probably here to stay. But now on this resort fee, if you are a member of a uh, players club and you gamble in that casino, do they always charge you that resort fee, even though if you're, you're making a, a comp reservation through the players club? Sometimes they do. Reduce and, yeah, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It's really, you know, comps, obviously comps and things that you get back through the players card is an important strategy when you come to Vegas. You know, something I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because you always want to, if you're going to gamble at all, or even if you aren't, you want to get a player's card. They used to call them slot cards. They now call them players' cards. You want to use it and show it whenever you're doing anything in the casino because that's your best route to getting discounts. Now, if you're a, a gambler who plays to a certain level, then you're going to get certain complimentaries or comps, as we call them. And uh, all the casinos treat them differently. Some will waive a resort fee with a, with a comp. Some will give you a comp room and charge you the resort fee anyway. Some will charge you tax on top of that. Some will waive the tax. It all depends on the policy. All right. Now, now, what would you say is the best time of year to visit? I guess that, that, that offers, uh, I mean, in the summer it's going to be extremely hot, mm -hmm. or is, is there one time of year where the, the, the prices are the best? Yeah, there's two, times, there's two times a year that are good to visit Vegas. The reasons being is the prices are going to be the lowest, especially room rates. Room rates are going to be very low at two different times. One is July. Um, July is the hottest time of, you know, July and August are the t hottest times in Vegas. 
and people don't want to come to Vegas because it's too hot unless they're absolutely going to lizard it out by the pool. You know, then they're like, good, the hotter the better. But most people don't want to do that. They want to wait until the weather's a little more tepid. Um, so July is a very good time when you're going to find low rates and special deals coming from the casinos. But the best of all, without question, is December. December is a time when everybody's getting ready for the new year, they're getting ready for the holidays, they're either spending money in other places, they're getting ready for Christmas. That's when we see room rates go low, 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 the lowest ever for any point of the year. And we've done this in the Las Vegas Advisor. We've done um, uh, room rate surveys for years, and it's never failed to materialize that this is the cheapest time of year to come, and especially after the first week and a half of December when the National Finals Rodeo is left town. So I'd say anywhere from about the 12th of December through the 24th, right through Christmas Eve, is the absolute golden time, the bargain time in Vegas. All right, and let's take the, the opposite one, say the most expensive time, which I would guess is New Year's Eve and Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know, any time that there's a, a three- or four-day holiday in Vegas, you want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. um, the, biggest, the biggest times, of course, New Year's Eve, probably number one, Super Bowl, probably number two. Um, uh, another one could be um, uh, well, March Madness, you know, when people come from Thursday through Sunday. And then the other thing you want to avoid is you want to, if you can get on to a website that will tell you when there's big conventions in town. Um, my website, lasvegasadvisor.com, we always have a convention calendar so people can check it. So you want to avoid things like CES, you know, when, when the town is just sold out and all the room rates get jacked up and ratcheted up that way. Uh, magic, you know, which is the, the clothing thing, I think. But you want to avoid those. Uh, big conventions is a no-no. All right, and what general advice do you have for beginning gamblers? Okay, gambling. Uh, you are uh, area of expertise. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I like to find deals. I like to do cheap shrimp cocktails and, and big hot dogs for two bucks. But uh, gambling is the thing that I came here to do, and that's where I spend most of my time and, and attention. And customers are always asking, or, or people or friends are always asking, you know, how can I win? You know, that's, that's the question they always ask us, how can I win? Well, the reality is there's two ways to win. One is to get lucky. <laughs> you know, and just play away and get lucky, and there's no way to make that happen. Two is to get skilled, and that requires work. Now, the problem with that is that most people don't want work. They don't want to work. They want what I call a magic pill. They would like me to tell them how they could walk up, take this magic pill, not work hard, and win at gambling. Well, wouldn't that be nice? You know, that would be terrific, and then there would be no casinos, and magic pills wouldn't be valuable because there'd be no place to win money from. So, I mean, the casinos are here, obviously, to, uh, to win the money. Um, there, are, there are certain things that customers can do. We, we spoke, or I spoke at the beginning, about basic strategies, which means learning a little bit about the games that you want to play. Um, you know, that could be getting a strategy card and carrying it around that tells you how to play blackjack better uh, or to play video poker better. It could mean actually devoting some time in the months prior to your trip to actually read a book or two. Um, actually practice a little bit with certain, you know, online uh, or tutorial uh, software programs that you can buy. Anything you can do like that. But again, most people probably won't even go that far. So what I always tell new gamblers is two things. One, we've already mentioned, get a player's card right off the bat whenever you play, no matter what you're playing, whether it's, it's video poker or slots or you're playing at a table game, show that card or put that card in the machine. Because whatever you do, you're going to get some small return from doing that. Two is try to avoid faster games. All right, You have to work under the, the assumption and the premise that you are playing at a disadvantage to the casino. Hence, you want to get, put your money out less often. You want less exposure to that casino edge. So you want to play games that are slower, not faster. And that typically means play table games. Learn to play table games where the pace is slow as opposed to slots or video poker where the pace is very, very fast. Mm -hmm. In gambling, essentially, speed kills. So you want to stay away from speedy situations. Taking that farther and farther out, I mean, one of the best wagers, gambles, that a customer, that a player, a new player can make is a sports bet. Because you go up and you bet 20 bucks on a game. You know, let's say you're from Cleveland and you want to bet the Browns, you know, or you're from San Francisco and you want to bet the Niners. Bet on your team, and you've got two and a half to three hours of action at a low casino edge of about 4.5%, 5%, and your money's going to last longer that way. Right. You know, my son does that every year. He takes $20 and he bets it on the Dolphins to win the Super Bowl. Now he's got a whole year's worth, right? <laughs> well, until the Dolphins are out of it, right? <laughs> and, and he's so optimistic every year. 
And then he goes straight down the tubes, but it's only $20 and it keeps him happy for a few months. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's, it's all about staying away from the fast games that gobble your money. You see, people will say, oh my goodness, you know, this penny slot machine is really great. I can only play for pennies. Mm -hmm. Well, that penny machine will take $2.50 off it, you know? So if you start letting it get away from yourself, all of a sudden you're not betting a penny or five cents. You're betting two fifty, and you're doing it at lightning speed. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, there goes your bankroll. Mm -hmm. Now, now, one thing which we put in the American Casino Guide each year and uh, is, is relative to the Las Vegas market especially is the uh, slot machine payback percentages because most people are going to play slot machines. And if you look at the statistics that are put out each year by the Gaming Commission, we put them in the book. We also put them on our website at AmericanCasinoGuide.com. Mm -hmm. It shows that the slot machine, the average slot machine payback percentages on the strip are lower than they are at the off-strip casinos or, or on Boulder right. Highway, North Las Vegas, or downtown. So that's one suggestion that, that we make. If you want to play slots, don't do it all in the strip. Go and play in, in some of these other places. I would say just about any game. I mm -hmm. mean, when it comes to where you're going to get better odds. Now, you have to understand going in that the difference between better and, you know, or, you know, looser or better or whatever uh, is not that great. So it is, it is true. You'll look at, at these sorts of reports or you'll look at rules that can be quantified so you know exactly which game is better. And down, uh, excuse me, the strip tends to be the worst of it. You can do better at other places like downtown or at the, at the locals casinos. But typically it's not that much difference. But remember, you're playing a lot. You're playing a lot. And that's where, you know, the more you play, the more important it is to try to go to a place where the odds are better for you. The paybacks are, are richer or better. And you're, you're right. You can look at payback percentages and know that. If you know what you're doing, you can look at video poker pay schedules, and you can tell that it's definitely better to play downtown than, than the center of the strip. You know, you're going to do better at a place like the Four Queens in, in terms of your, your chances than you will at a place like Bellagio. That's just, that's just a fact. So for the person who's going to go and visit Las Vegas, what is your best advice for how they can save money on shows? Okay, for shows, the important thing to understand is that, except for the, the biggest shows, like Celine Dion, Cirque du Soleil, that sort of thing, the shows are priced, they're inflated with price so that they can discount. And those discounts are out there everywhere. So you shouldn't just jump at the first price you see. You should look around. You should go online. You should look at magazines. You should look at, uh, you know, look for codes. Go to the Ticks for Tonight booths, which are half price booths on the Strip. Um, anything, basically the rule is, except for the bigger shows, you don't want to pay retail. Um, when it comes to the big shows, if you want to see something like Blue Man or Cirque du Soleil, then maybe you will pay retail, but you should still check around. There are still codes. Uh, we do a lot of this at LasVegasAdvisors.com, where we have codes that are, will get you at least 20 bucks off or 25 bucks off. So you should always be looking for the discounts on shows. Another strategy is to look for shows on the low end. And by the low end, I mean lower price range. Comedy clubs are an excellent uh, example of that. There are probably a dozen comedy clubs in Vegas, and these are top-notch stars. Guys like uh, Seinfeld started in, uh, and I think David Brenner for years, started in the comedy clubs in Vegas. And the new stars are coming up now. They're really good. You can get them all sorts, from almost family-friendly to very, very dirty. And then they'll tell you, you know, this is X-rated comedy or whatever. But the discounts are, are readily available for these. Uh, they're easy to get to. You can also um, you can uh, go to the free lounge shows. A lot of people think that the lounge shows are dead in Vegas. Not true. The lounges uh, are going strong everywhere. They're on the Strip. They're downtown. Uh, you don't usually have to pay for that. There's often not even a, a drink minimum when you go to a lounge show. Uh, or finally, just the free attractions. You know, go downtown and see the Fremont Street experience, or you know, go over to Bellagio and watch the fountains, or go into Bellagio and look at the conservatory or the big you know dripping chocolate that they've got in there. A lot of these places have things that are put there to attract the tourists and they're they're fun to see especially if you got kids the kids love those free attractions you know they're cool mm -hmm. and, and again for some of these mid-level uh, shows in Las Vegas uh, there's a lot of two-for-one coupons in your member rewards yeah the Las Vegas advisor you know we we have a lot of discounts both on our website with codes and uh, for members of the Las Vegas advisor for subscribers with uh, something we call member rewards uh, lots of discounts on shows, and I know that your book as well, American Casino Guide, has two-for-ones on shows. People should be looking everywhere, anything not to pay retail. All right, now let's move over to dining. How can people save money on dining in Las Vegas? Dining is similar. Dining, dining is similar to shows. Um, you know, look for coupons, look for discounts. 
but a great, and look, and look for the loss leaders. In dining, in, in casinos, a lot of casinos use dining as a loss leader. So that's what we're talking about, the cheap, uh, you know, the cheap breakfast, the cheap buffets, the, uh, the big hot dogs for $3, the $1.50 shrimp cocktails. You know, there's, there are still 99 cent shrimp cocktails around. You know, there's one right now at uh, Lanai Express at the Fremont. So these things are always going to be there. The other thing that Vegas has that people overlook all the time are tons and tons of happy hours. And that's not just in the restaurants around town or the bars around town. It's in the casino restaurants themselves. Almost every one of them has some kind of a happy hour. So scope it out. You know, check your hotel. See, the, take a look at the restaurants in there. See when their happy hours run and take advantage of those. Oh, and, and, and one other thing, let me ask you about this. The uh, Players Club cards, a lot of times the, the, there will Good be one. discounts by presenting your Players Club card. Even if you don't play, you just have the card. Right? Exactly. That's why, you know, going back to previous advice, you always want to have a Players card, and you always want to show it whatever you do. Um, there are buffets in town that you can get up to $5 off on a buffet just by showing the card. Most places it's 2 to $3. Some places it's only $1. Some places they'll say, hey, thanks. Thanks for showing me. You don't get anything off for that, you know. But you always want to try it because uh, the discounts can be substantial there. All right, and one last question. I know we touched on this before, but let's go back to the rooms. How, how can people save money on rooms in Las Vegas? Well, saving money on rooms has a lot to do with, uh, as we discussed, when you come. Yeah, so it's time of year. Time of year has a lot to do with it. The other thing you can do with hotels, I mean, obviously, cons being a consumer is, is paramount. You know, you want to look around. You want to look around and compare. You want to go to different websites and see. But once you start looking around, you'll find that there are codes for rooms. There are discount codes for rooms. And some of these, they're different in different places. But if you find the right ones, you can find some tremendous values. Uh, this is something we started doing at LasVegasAdvisor.com about five years ago. And I didn't realize... Um, how pervasive it is and how many of these discounts are out there and they're there to be had. You've got to look around. You, it's another situation where you just don't take the first thing that comes your way. You look for the codes and the discounts and you're going to get, you're going to get a deal. Um, or potentially uh, packages. Look for packages that are bundled together. Like maybe you're coming out with Southwest Airlines or, or Allegiance or something like that. Take a look at their room package, these all-inclusive things. Um, check your, uh, you know, check your local newspapers. They're one of the best ones in LA. They have they have lots of Vegas deals that run in the newspapers. So you just want to look at as many sources as you can. It all comes down to planning ahead and spending the time to be a consumer. All right, great. Thank you very much for the tips. Now, if people want to get more information on some of the uh, gambling books you publish or your, your monthly newsletter, uh, Las Vegas Advisor, where would they do that? Well, everybody does the internet these days. So I mean, you know, obviously you want to go on the net. LasVegasAdvisor.com. Uh, pretty much once you get to the home page, it's going to lead you to all those things. We've got Las Vegas's top 10 values there. We've got information about the coupons that we have. We have information about the codes that we have. And trust me, we try to be the best in all these areas. So if you want to go to just one stop, that's probably as good as any to go to. All right. Anthony Curtis, publisher of the Las Vegas Advisor, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure. Don't forget that you can see more of our educational gambling videos on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash American Casino Guide.